I'm just trying. Perfect. I'm just continuing to admit people as they come in. So my name is Michaela. I'm one of the counselors with Moon Prep. Welcome to our essay presentation today, where we are going to be really walking through how to make a fantastic personal statement together. I'm so thankful that you are choosing to spend your evening with us. And tonight we're going to be tackling the subject of writing winning essays, which are definitely one of the biggest and most daunting components of the college admission process. Um, and probably the part that truthfully leads, leaves parents the most stressed over. Um, my name is Michaela. I'm one of the counselors at Moon Prep. Previously, I was an admissions counselor um, at a big university and um, really was the person behind the screen making those acceptances and seeing applications. And so um, I like to bring that knowledge to all of you and um, yeah, I would like to introduce Nitty also, my co-host. Nitty, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Nitty. I am another counselor in Moon Prep and Michaela's co-host for the evening. I'm actually a BFMD student myself. I'm a member of the Brown Plimi and my specialty really lies in essay coaching and essay editing to really make sure that whether you're working on the personal statement or a supplement, it is really the strongest that it could possibly be. And we are so excited to speak to you a little bit about um, navigating the personal statement process and, and about um, working with the Moon Prep um, routine to make sure that your personal statement is the best possible. Perfect. But first, we'd like to tell you a little bit about Moon Prep um, and can I, yeah, um, Moon Prep and why you should listen to us. Truthfully, the great thing about Moon Prep is that um, all of our counselors come from a variety of professional backgrounds, like admissions counselors, ACT prep tutors, professional writers, and guidance counselors, so that when you work with one of us, you truthfully do work with all of us. You're benefiting from our collective experience. And another thing I love is that we are always seeking ways to connect with families in a new way. So we do these free webinars, or we post Ask Me Anything sessions on Reddit, or we write articles for Forbes. You can really find us anywhere in the BSMD and competitive admissions experience or kind of arena. <laughs> um, so Moon Prep is made up of a team of independent counselors who work with students virtually on college admissions one-on-one. -on -one. And we guide them through not only the you know college admissions process, but also just high school, navigating classes, which courses to sign up for for their major. We're also helping younger students select the right classes and also narrow down an area of interest, as well as build up their resume um, through summer research opportunities or internships. We really have a deep focus on helping students develop the strongest possible applicant profile. And then of course, with our rising seniors, um, people who are just done with junior year, we are helping them we're helping guide them through college applications. Everything from starting the common application when it opens and checking out the supplemental essays and then also helping brainstorm the college admissions essays based on the hundreds of effective ones that we've seen. Our counselors are working nights, weekends, after school and in every time zone, just whenever it is convenient for the student. And we also work with medical, medical applicants and grad school applicants too. We do have a focus, um, a specialty in highly selective college admissions like Ivy Leagues and other selective colleges and also direct medical programs also called BSMD programs. Our counselors meet regularly to share advice about our students so again, when you work with one of us, you really do get to work with all of us. 
So um, I am going to, at this time, I'm going to present my screen. I might have to switch back and forth a little bit to allow people in. Nidhi, can you let people in too? Or I have been letting people in. Oh, thank, good. thank goodness. Okay, perfect. Yeah, works. <laughs> Thank you. We're just both double letting people in. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. So just, there we go. Perfect. All right. So let's break down the personal statement together. Uh, the personal statement is one essay that goes to dozens of applications. And it's probably the only essay that every single school on your list is going to see that's on the Common App. Uh, the Coalition app and Apply Texas and um, even the UC app have essays that you like pretty much all schools will see, but the Common App personal statement is pretty much a staple if you use the Common App at all and like a lot of schools are on there. There is a 650 word limit and seven prompts and these prompts together are just about wide enough that you can write about pretty much anything under the sun. So it's really important that you hone your idea and get it placed quite well. Absolutely. And truthfully with 650 words, like I feel like students always wish it was longer <laughs> to tell more. What it comes down to when we're, especially when we're talking about the personal statement, this can also come across with supplemental essays too, but this personal statement is really your chance to show your personality. It is the moment in the application process that you can literally reach out your hand and shake the admissions officer's hands. They can actually get to know your personality. The supplemental essays are usually smaller. There are a couple 500 word ones, but most cases they're smaller supplemental essays that ask a targeted question. Like, why did you choose your major? And you can share, you know, pieces of your personality throughout those essays, but this personal statement on the Common App is really where your personality has the chance to shine. So it's your goal to make sure that your essay really says everything that it should to get across who you are. So a way to do that is if you are traditionally like a funny person that all your friends agree that you are funny, um, um, this is the chance to show, you don't need to be check, um, cracking jokes throughout your entire essay, but you can write clever sentences to show that you have a sense of humor. Um, you can say like, I walked into the nail salon, the epitome of girlhood, you know, like you can add in clever bits to show your personality, even without cracking jokes the whole time. So then when you are really planning supplemental essays as well, this is really the time, you know, when you are brainstorming for the personal statement, this is something that we'll talk about all the time, that um, when you're brainstorming for the personal statement, you can also brainstorm in general and come up with a lot of good ideas for those school specific supplemental essays too. So if you're brainstorming using the personal statement prompts, you know, and there's that one that asks about a time that you overcame an obstacle, well, many other schools also ask for an overcoming an obstacle essay. So just, you know, I recommend for all of my students to make a little map for themselves of all the different prompts that they're gonna have to write for all the essays, as well as what word counts they each require. And I have them do that before we start brainstorming for the personal statement. So they can see the essays they have to write well in advance. And as we're brainstorming, we can start checking them off of our, our essay map or our essay list. So just as you, know, you see here, this is exactly the process to follow. Um, to make a list of those supplemental essays, I like to call that an essay map um, that you can just cross off as you're as you're going. And I also like I also recommend to um, arrange that by deadline, so you're getting done with the essays that are due first, 
for your first applications. Um, and then move into answering all the personal statement prompts from the Common App and try to see how far you can take each answer. You don't have to write a whole essay on every single prompt, but this is the time that you can um, truly start to see how far you can take each prompt and really play with how introspective you can get and just see all the very fascinating facets um, of, of your life that you can uncover through an essay prompt. And then lastly, um, I recommend reading sample essays. You can find these all over the internet, even Reddit nowadays, um, but especially check out the essays that are published by the colleges. Um, I think Howard University and Johns Hopkins University, those are a couple examples of colleges that publish their top five or top 10 favorite essays every year. And you can go back through the years and read some essays that the schools themselves said were great. Um, don't just rely on, you know, a a forum or something to say like, this was my essay and I got into every school I applied to, you know, check out the ones that the colleges themselves really said that they liked. And then you can truly, one of the best things you can do is to revisit your resume and um, truly just start to see if there's a theme that you can pull out. Like if you have been involved in clinical experiences, you've volunteered at a hospice center, you've done, you've maybe volunteered at a refugee organization, maybe there's a theme of empathy that's coming out. And even though you don't have to necessarily talk about those resume items, you can talk about how you're an empathetic person um, and talk about that theme that comes across in your resume without ever really resume dropping quite yet. So look through your resume and see if there's any hidden stories or um, themes that draw through really strongly. Um, in turn with looking at the story intrinsic to your resume, we've also kind of compiled this list of brainstorming questions that a lot of our students and our counselors have found helpful. Um, you, we'll pause for a second right now so you can screenshot this if you wish, but um, the following are really good to start thinking and just start free writing. So a lot of people write about families. So what makes your family different? Are there any cultural ho holidays, traditions? Um, you personally, what single achievement are you proud of? What's the nicest thing you've done and how has helping someone change your perspective? Uh, what you want to do in the future, maybe avoid this one if it's too career oriented, but what do you hope to do, be doing 10 years from now and kind of link that to um, your life so far? Uh, there's what's the greatest challenge you overcame? Um, and then these are the remaining ones. Describe a time you felt empathy, that you were out of your comfort zone. Describe a time you received kindness, whether or not you deserved it. And describe a time you showed kindness, even though someone else may not deserve it. Uh, obviously, one person may not have the answer to all of these questions or the same set of experiences. But when we compiled this list, we kind of thought to include a wide range of questions that might reflect the experiences of a wide range of people. So that's how we came up with these. And a lot of our students have found them very helpful to start brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then we have some topics to avoid as well. And these are perfectly fine topics to cover um, in supplemental essays, but just as a warning that these topics typically are very common to see on personal statements. So 
these are ones that we kind of recommend avoiding for the personal statement at least. Anything involving a tragedy, especially a family tragedy. Now, there are certainly students that have escaped war-torn countries and you know, things like like big kind of monumental things like that. But what we're specifically referring to here is anything that sounds so negative that it doesn't have an uplift moment, that is the point that many personal statements sound like it's just a recounting of terrible things that have, that have happened in people's lives. And there's no point of how they shifted it upward how, how did they come back from this? What did they do with that? Um, the, and then similarly, anything about winning the big game or winning the big presentation, um, going to state, anything about working with a team, you worked really hard together, you overcame a, an obstacle and then you made it to state or something like that. There is just very, very common personal statement topics and so to stand out, um, we recommend a skipping that one. Also overcoming injury. Now this is a very good why major essay if you are going into the pre-med route, um, but for the personal statement, again, it's very common. Um, politics and religion is just something that we recommend kind of skipping because you don't really ever know who's on the other side of the screen reading that and if they agree with you or not. So if you're taking a stand on something, the person reading it might not agree with you. And, you know, it could like unconsciously bias them towards you. And so just, I, we recommend kind of leaving it out completely. And then also mentioning why you chose your major or why you chose the college, because there are usually supplemental essays on that. Um, and also the personal statement is going to go to all the colleges. So we don't want to mention one in there. So one of the most important things is to start off right. And to do that, you need a hook or a catchy phrase that draws the reader in. These are some examples of our favorite hooks, but really what you want to do is hint to the contents of the essay while not giving too much away and say something witty or catchy if wit or humor is really your forte that's fine but uh, i feel like this is the one place where you do want to um exert your efforts to kind of have a line that draws people in uh some of them are um yeah, some of some of these are um, quite different than the others, but really they all reflect the contents of the essay. For example, the first one, they say the laughter is the best medicine. That's a pre-med student who enjoys stand-up comedy. So that is a really great way to start off that. You never know where a simple idea might take you. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what that is essay was actually about I think but it was about entrepreneurship if I remember correctly oh okay okay yeah yeah, yeah. but it, even so it draws me in being the odds is quite literally in my blood this is a student whose father I think beat a terminal illness mm -hmm. and that really impacted them and and my hand shook as I discovered my mistake um, all, all four of these are quite different emotions, but at the same time, all four of these have that ability to draw the reader in and have a catchy entry phrase. So definitely recommend starting off with a hook and then following through with the substantiation. Mm -hmm. So um, these are examples of how a really great hook can happen. This is obviously our recipe um, written out. And then down here, it's, I bet you didn't read those numbers. I'll let you in on a secret. I didn't either. Um, basically, this is like the ingredients above were copied and pasted from the first Google search result for fried rice recipe. But I can tell you it's wrong. The only true recipe for um, fried rice is no recipe at all. There's no measurements. It's just feelings and smells. And then the writer goes on to describe how they learned to cook this particular dish um, that they were, you know, <laughs> covered in blues clues, 
stickers um, and kind of like what was the environment that they learned to cook this dish in. And so we're getting a window into this author's life behind the scenes. And then they get introspective. I enjoy recipes. I enjoy the process of, you know, the details, the leveling, the weighing. Um, I like the memories involved in it, that people have recipes passed down from their families. Um, and, you know, from a young age that they found kind of solace in really kind of cooking different recipes and different things like that. It's a stress reliever and it's room for creative license, you know, it, like it flows into mess that she has outside of, you know, the kitchen. Um, and then also going into how the details are something that draws her in measuring the liquid in the graduating cylinder is satisfying. Um, and it, that bleeds into other things too. And when a text message has a typo in it, everything like that. And then now she's understanding the beauty of spontaneity and organic creation, realizing that it's okay that two creations of fried rice will never be the same and that's okay and how the author is learning to love improvisation. So this is a really great way of truthfully drawing someone in. It was a great story all throughout and we really feel like we got to know the author. So here's another example of a very different essay, but one that's equally effective. So, you know, colorful red thread intricately laces together a denim square and a flag patterned remnant of a sweatshirt once owned by my brother. Slowly but surely each square meeting one another transforms into a st stunning patchwork quilt beneath my careful fingers. What began as a simple 4-H project has become a passion for quilting to teach others to honor military veterans. And she has taught, you know, um, small workshops hosting and educating others to honor military veterans, teaching them to sew these quilts of valor, which is an award that civilians can bestow to military service members or veterans. And the effort I put into teaching reminds me that true leadership is not about promoting myself. Instead, it's using my abilities to teach others and express, express gratitude. And then saying, you know, my final quilt, the final quilt that she works on before going off to college um, is sitting in the corner. In the construction of this particular quilt, I guided eight youth in the construction, oh, she used construction twice, of the folded work of art. Together, we are simply small pieces connected by a thread of community, patriotism, and gratitude, working together to leave the world a kinder place. So you can see kind of the um, the really, um, uh, what's it called, formulas at work here, that there are two d very different styles of essays, but they're both very effective in letting us get to know the author um, as they bring us along on this story. By the end, we feel like we got to know them and that if we had a university that we owned <laughs> um, or worked at that we might let them in simply because they did a good job of making us like them by the end. So we know that this um, presentation is kind of a big deal <laughs> and that a lot of people are working on essays right now. So we wanted to make sure that we left a lot of time at the end for questions and that, you know, you could get some advice on whether an essay topic is a good direction or you know, supplemental essays, things like that. So we really wanna open up this time to be able to ask the question. So start sending them in. In the meantime, feel free to visit our website. So, you know, I mentioned before the importance of, you know, we're gonna make an essay map and that's gonna be based off of the college list that you built. We have resources on our resources page, it's just moonprep.com slash resources. Um, we have guidebooks and ebooks and pamphlets and worksheets 
that help with all of these things, building a college list, um, brainstorming the personal statement, and even how to brainstorm different supplemental essays, um, like the Y major essay. We even have um, essays that worked. We have an ebook that's about, I think it's 55 pages or something like that. That's all about essays that worked and guides over the personal statement. So, you know, not only do we spend our time connecting with you over web uh, over webinars like this, but we also are using our time not meeting with students to create these resources to help people for free as well. And also um, join, go on to our blog page and sign up for our newsletter. We produce two newsletters every single month that's all based around admissions news so that all you have to do is sign up for that and you can get two emails a month that basically keep you up on all of the major admissions news. We spend hours combing all the news sites and everything to find the most important news things um, to share with you all. And you're also welcome to, you know, oh, here's our resources page. Yes, you're welcome to also um, send us an email at hello at moonprep.com. If you would like one-on-one -on -one instruction with one of our counselors, we would love to work with you. And we have free consultations. Um, you can also click the schedule um, button in, on our website as well and schedule a free meeting that we can discuss our services with you and how we can help you more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But I'm going to go to this screen like this so that I can um, jump into the chat. So send in your questions. All right. So question number one is, how do I make a list of supplemental essays? How do I know which schools need it? That's a great question. Um, so essentially, you know, this is a great question. You know, also a guidance counselor can help this too if, you know, your guidance counselor knows you at school. But a list of supplemental essays is something that not only can you easily Google, um, but also when you do start a common app um, account, you can also check the supplemental essays in the Common App. So a lot of people Google them up ahead of time, but it is the summer. So some schools are still deciding or they haven't released their supplemental essays yet. Um, so that is just something that I recommend Googling and making sure that they've actually been released for the year before starting them. <laughs> but if, there, if you do run across one that hasn't been released yet, that's totally fine. Just move on to another school and start those essays instead. The next one, would you recommend expanding on an extracurricular, being specific about our experiences and weaving that into the personal statement, or would that be considered redundant? Emily, that's a great question. Um, so truthfully, um, oh, I don't know who came, okay. Um, truthfully, I would again make that essay map and if there is not a describe an activity essay that you have to write among all the schools on your list, then I think, um, or if there's an activity that you know you wouldn't write about in a describe an activity essay or the leadership essay, those are very common essays um, that they ask for in supplemental essays, then I think you can weave in an extracurricular, like how it shaped you maybe. It could be you know, like if you have done Girl Scouts, you can talk about how different ages, um, how you grew up and how different tools or um, projects that you worked on, how they shaped you kind of a thing. That could be something that you weave throughout. Another question, a question from Carol for a 600 word essay or statement, should each section be equal in part, like three paragraphs, 200 words each? No, um, usually the word count is 650 and 
it should just read like a normal essay. So sometimes there's a whole paragraph that's only one sentence. It's a short sentence that draws the eye to, you know, make sure that there is a really important um, sentence that's caught. So nope, it doesn't need to follow any sort of pattern or um, formula basically. And then my aunt's breast cancer diagnosis led to my mother having breast surgery. This inspired me to volunteer at a cancer center and perform research, cancer research. It is a good topic because it inspired you to do something. I would possibly, like you could definitely use that, but you could also use that essay for the why medicine essay. Like that would be a perfect formula for the why medicine essay as well. And some of those essays are ask you to do a 500 word essay on the why medicine. So that is just something that I might recommend right off the bat is consider that for the why medicine. But otherwise, if you don't have any other ideas, um, that could be something that you do write about for the personal statement. I think I would just make sure that you are talking about you the entire time. It would be easy for that essay to talk about your family, your aunt and your mom and how you were scared and not really start to talk about you until three fourths the way through it. So find a way to make sure that it's about you still. And from Varun, um, do you do interview prep? Yes, we do. So we absolutely do interview prep for both BSMD programs um, and traditional universities, so um, pre-med schools. So if you get an interview somewhere, we would love to help you with interview prep. And also, if you sign up for a package of hours with us, um, interview prep is included. So there's nothing to add on. If you're working, if you sign up for 20 or 30 hours with us, um, interview prep is included in that. So there's nothing to add on to do interview prep later. Can some stories impact the prospective student negatively? So in for this question, Carol, um, um, impacting the prospective student negatively, honestly, if the story is written in a negative way. I've seen a lot of essays that were just written negatively, like a, just a list of everything that has gone wrong. And that is something that I recommend staying away from because that can affect you negatively. If you can imagine an admissions counselor would be, is sitting there, they're reading 40 S applications essays per day. And if they read 10 or 20 essays that's talking about, you know, losing parents to cancer, you know, a lot of like really heavy topics, at some point it really wears you down. And that's where it can affect a student negatively if they haven't written an essay that has a good uplift. Um, and I kind of covered this, should you write an essay about extracurriculars? I mean, just make sure that you're writing about you. And there is maybe you can write about extracurriculars if there's a theme about about you and also your essay map that you've created with your college list doesn't already cover those essays. Um, because otherwise you're going to be you don't want to write your personal statement and then run into a, um, a, a supplemental essay later that makes you have to dismantle your personal statement if that makes sense, and then you have to start all over and find some. And then if the essay, okay, I can't, I can't. If the essays are like facts, is it okay? How do I improve the flow? Does one sentence follow another with connections or words? Um, I guess I probably would need to see an example of this, Sam. So again, if you, this is a perfect thing to bring up if you wanted to work with us one-on-one, -on -one, we could actually dive into the essay. Um, but 
I've seen essays that were like a timeline. So I'm sure you could do something about facts, like fact, um, you know, bears are bigger than wolverines. <laughs> I don't know. But no one tells you that if you study bears long enough, you know, you'll develop an obsession. And now my entire room is covered with bears. And then fact, um, birds fly further than bugs. But what someone doesn't tell you is, you know, like you could do something like that, but make sure that the facts also have things about you. Like in the first one you learned, I collect um, toys, <laughs> um, bear toys. <laughs> so I would make sure that that's how you improve the flow is again, by adding content about you, little details, almost like secrets about you into the essay to make sure that flows better. But again, perfect example of something that we would love to actually look at your essay and we can help with that flow. Um, can your personal statement focus on an extracurricular that relates to your major or is that too common? So once again, just if that extracurricular is not covered by your, the, the, the essays that will be required by the schools you plan to apply to, um, it is something that you could focus on, but just again, make sure that the focus is on you and how that extracurricular helped you grow. Structure, you know, structure the essay focused on you. That is what, that is a muscle, a new muscle that it's hard for students to kind of exercise is learning how to write a piece that is focused on them. Um, so again, this would be something that we would love to help you with one-on-one. -on -one. Can I start? Oh. I guess my audio winked out there for a second, but I I hope you can hear me now. Can someone write in and let me know if you can hear me? Okay, perfect, thank you guys. Um, it sounded like I was freezing for a second, I'm so sorry. Um, so how specific should a personal statement be? For example, should you talk about one specific event or your life as a whole or somewhere in the middle? So truthfully, I like to pick, I recommend kind of letting them have a window into your life. Now that does not mean, um, I'm going to scoop this down so I can see if somehow I, my audio goes off again. Um, so I do not like the essays that are like, I roll out of bed and brush my teeth. Like they, they, they take you through maybe one hour of someone's day and you don't really get context into like who they are. So you'll see a lot of those essays out there on the internet. I don't necessarily love those, but I do like um, essays where you kind of focus in on something, like a detail about something and then zoom out the lens to give like zoom back a little bit to give context. Um, like the one that we used in the hooks, my hands shook as I realized what I'd done. You could say my hands shook as I realized what I'd done and I looked down at the, the liquid poured all over the floor um, as dark as blood or something like that. You know, something that like is still kind of shocking and then you zoom out. I had only been in this lab for two weeks. I had just gotten this internship and I was trying to prove myself, but now looking at this broken beaker on the floor, I realized I had, you know, more obstacles to overcome before I could impress people. And then like explaining, why were you there? Um, so I, you don't have to talk about your entire life, but talk about like pick an event or pick an object or something that allows you to kind of share a lot about who you are and how you developed. Um, but I've seen, I've seen a lot of people do kind of like a entire 
an entire life story that's kind of hard to do in 650 words, etc. And I, um, Carol, I suppose I was trying to figure out when one focuses on the reason why one chose a specific program. So that would be a supplemental essay. Um, I would not put that in the personal statement of like why you chose a specific program. Um, I would just recommend saving that, like, like most schools have a why us essay now or a why major. And in both of those cases, you can include that then. If you talk about one specific event, how do you put in different aspects of your personality? Um, okay. For example, if you talked about one event that was maybe one day in the life of like an EMT or something, and you are talking about this person was rushed in, um, you could say something like immediately, like when the person was rushed in, I was in the middle of telling jokes to the, to the room of attending um, nurses. And, you know, we stopped everything. We looked at the door. Someone was rushed in. We knew immediately, like, joke time is over. It's time to be serious. We focus on the patient. Then, you know, when the patient is uncovered, there was a large amount of blood or something like that. And immediately my mind quieted because I learned from Girl Scouts, I need to stay calm under pressure. Well, you can talk about different things, how you know, you're learning different things. Maybe she is kind of the life of the party. Everyone likes her because she's telling jokes when you walk in, but then you learn something. Oh, I remember from my training days out in the woods with the Girl Scouts, stay calm under, under pressure, especially when there's an injury involved. You can like kind of work out different things throughout one event if you're telling it in real time or reflecting back on a, an event. And again, um, these kind of like really specific questions are perfect for helping for kind of like meeting with a counselor and talking through your like specific essay. We would love to help with that. Um, I have a direct message here. Um, I've been dancing since I was five during COVID. I went to nursing homes and shared my love of dance and music with seniors. I think that's a great topic. Um, I think I would kind of focus on um, really the dance and how you feel and what you've gotten out of dance um, and then how you wanted to share that dance with others um, and share the way it made you feel with others and kind of, again, just keep it focused on you. Can I start about attending a dance performance and how you miss not taking classes and how you started a passion project to help others in this area. So again, like dance could be something that you do the personal statement over, but maybe the passion project is something that you save for a supplemental essay uh, simply because it's more resume based. But again, if you're making your essay list and there isn't an essay that matches up with that, then you could absolutely add your passion project in. It just sounds like it's a really big deal and we might wanna focus an entire essay on it um, instead of passion project and dance. That could get, we don't wanna take away from either of those things for you. Well, that was kind of some rapid fire question. <laughs> Nitty, how's your voice doing? <laughs> um, it's hanging in there. Sorry, everyone. My um, I feel myself losing my voice, so that's why I sound kind of hoarse right now. But yeah. thank you so much, Michaela, for answering those questions. I couldn't agree more. And it's all about finding that balance between supplements and the normal essays. So. I'm sure that each of you have a very unique story that you can bring out, but it's all about learning 
where and when to bring out those tiny details, mm -hmm. as Michaela so wonderfully said. Um, perfect. Well, um, thank you all for spending your evening with us. Again, if you are struggling with ideas on the personal statement, we would love for you to check out our resources. Here's the link right here, as well as we would love to work out with you one on one on one and actually help you shape those essays into final products that can be um, submitted to colleges. So we hope that you will join us again on our next webinar. And we are so thankful that you chose to spend your evening with us learning about essays together and answering questions. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.